Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, May 30, 2021. The title of our Sunday School lesson is Preaching to Enemies. Background Scripture, Jonah Chapter 3. Our Sunday School material is the NIV Standard Lesson Commentary, Curriculum Year 2020-2021. Let's start with a prayer. Panginoon, pag-aaralan po namin si Propetang Jonah at ang kanyang misyon na dalhin ang iyong minsahe sa Ninive. Dinadalangin namin, Panginoon, na samahan mo kami sa aming pag-aaral. Ituro mo sa amin, gabayan mo kami kung ano ang dapat naming matutunan. Inihiling namin, Panginoon, na sa pamamagitan ng aming pag-aaral na ito ay lumago kami sa aming pananampalataya. Ito ang dalangin namin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Okay, so let's just see the curriculum year 2020-2021. Year at a glance, in the first quarter, we studied God's world and God's people. And for three months, we studied the book of Genesis. The second quarter, our lesson was our love for God and call in the New Testament. And today, we are in the third quarter, the same prophets faithful to God's covenant. And starting next Sunday, the fourth quarter, confident hope. Quarter at a glance. Prophets faithful to God's covenant. 1,000 years of prophets and prophetic leadership. And we are now in the last lesson. Lesson 13. The prophet Jonah. His tenure as a prophet was 780 to 760 BC. This month, we are also in the last Sunday of this month. The same for the month of May, Courageous Prophets of Change. And today, we will be studying Jonah, preaching to enemy. Okay, so the setting, we are going to read Jonah chapter 3. Take note that this is in chapter 1 and chapter 2. Yun yung istorya ni Jonah. Alam na alam natin yung istorya ni Jonah. Binigyan siya ng trabaho ng Diyos. Tumakas siya, sumakay sa barko. Ang nangyari ay nagkaroon ng bagyo. At may drolats kung sino ang dapat sisihin. Siya ang dapat sisihin. Siya ang lubas sa drolats. Tinapon siya sa dagat. Tapos, lumubog siya doon sa kailailaliman ng dagat. Napulukutan na ng mga weeds, ng mga damo ng dagat ang lig niya. Tapos, kinain siya ng isda. On the third day, sinuka siya ng isda. Nabuhay siya. Ito na ngayon, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Subali, ay sinabi ulit ni Yahweh kay Jonas, pumunta ka sa lungsod ng Nineveh at ipahayag mo ang mga pinasasabi ko sa iyo. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Nagpunta nga si Jonas sa Nineveh. Malaki ang lungsod na ito. Aabutin ng tatlong araw kung lalakaring pabagtas. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Siya ay pumasok sa lungsod. Pagkaraan ng maghapong paglalakad, malakas niyang pinihayag. Gugunawin ang Nineveh pagkara pagkaraan ng apat na pong araw. The Ninevites believed God. 
a fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. Naniwala ang mga tagroon sa pahayag na ito mula sa Diyos. Kaya nag-ayuno sila at nagdamit ng sako bilang tanda ng lubos na pagsisisi at pagtalikod sa kanilang mga kasalanan. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Nang mabalitaan ito ng hari ng Ninive, bumaba siya sa kanyang truno, nagkubad ng balabal, nagdamit din ng sako, at naupo sa abo. This is the proclamation issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. At ipinasabi niya sa mga taga Ninive, ito'y utos ng hari at ng kanyang mga pinuno. Walang kakain isaman, wala rin inom, maging tao o hayop. But let the people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Lahat ng tao at hayop ay magdamit ng sako. Taimtim na manalangin sa Diyos ang bawat isa. Pagsisihan ng lahat ng nagawa nilang kasalanan at talikdan ang masamang pamumuhay. Who knows, God may yet relent and with compassion turn from His fierce anger so that we will not perish. Baka sa parang ito ay mapawi ang galit ng Diyos, magbago siya ng kanyang pasya at hindi na ituloy ang balak na paglipol sa atin. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, He relented and did not bring on them the destruction He had threatened. Nakita ng Diyos ang kanilang pagtalikod sa kasamaan, kaya hindi na tinuloy ang paggunaw sa Nineveh. The verse, When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, He relented and did not bring on them the destruction He had threatened. Okay, so ano ang aim ng lesson natin? Define repentance. Anong ibig sabihin ng repentance? Dapat, yan ang pinaka-issue ng lesson natin. Dapat, kayang-kaya natin yan pagkatapos ng lesson. Kayang-kaya natin sabihin kung anong ibig sabihin ng repentance. Least reasons why the Ninevites' reaction to Jonah's proclamation was unexpected. Yan. Ilista natin, enumerate, ano yung mga rason bakit nakakapagtaka ang kanilang reaksyon dun sa proclamation ni Jonah. It was unexpected, nakakapagtaka. Ano ba yung mga dati nilang ginagawa, ano ba ang kabuhayan nila, sino ba itong mga Ninevites na ito? Commit to one need a change to obey God more fully. Challenge to each and every one of us. Hanapin natin ang ating kahinaan, isang kahinaan na dapat nating baguhin upang totoong tayo ay makasunod sa Diyos. Upang totoong tayo ay nananampalataya sa Diyos. Identify one needed change. Ano kaya isang kailangang baguhin upang sa ganun ay mas maging totoo ang ating pananampalataya. Okay, lesson outline. This is the coverage of our lesson. So, the, we have an introduction, a conclusion. And Roman numeral number one, the word of the Lord. Verse one to four. 
Roman numeral number 2, the people of Nineveh. Verse 5 to 10. Okay, dito na tayo sa introduction. Satisfying end. Sabi rito, imagine that you are nearing the end of a book you just can't put down. Ang ganda nung binabasa mong libro. Malapit ka na doon sa end. Eh, nabasa mo na, malapit na. So you are anticipating a satisfying end. Mana, ma, ma, mapapanatag ang kalooban mo pag nakita mo na yung ini-expect mong ending. But, the book actually ends by telling you that the whole thing had been a dream. Sabi, hindi pala totoo. Ito nakita mo. Sabi rito, What? Why was I so invested in this? Nasayang lang ang oras ko. Hindi tama. Hindi tama ang ending. Now, let us look at Jonah. All Jonah wanted was an, an ending that made sense. Kasi, ano ba talaga ang rason bakit tumakas si Jonah? Bakit siya sumakay sa barko, umalis, papalayo dun sa pinag-uutos na pupunta niya? Bakit? Bakit? Yan. They deserve to be destroyed. Bakit? Kasi pupunta siya, ayaw niyang pumunta sa Nineveh. Bakit? Dahil ang trabaho binigay sa kanya ay warningan yung mga Nineveh. Baka ang inaalala ni Jonah, baka mamaya maniwala itong mga to at bumalik loob sila sa Diyos. At ano ang mangyayari pag bumalik loob sila sa Diyos? Maaaring magbago ang isip ng Diyos at hindi sila parusahan. Sabi niyan, they deserve to be destroyed. They had nothing to merit a happy ending. But how would God write the ending of this drama? Yun yung pinakabuo nito. Ayaw ni Jonah na magbago ang Diyos tungkol sa Nineveh. God already declared the destruction of Nineveh. And Jonah want God to continue with that, with that proclamation. He would, he would like to continue with the destruction of Nineveh. Yun yung ending that made sense para sa kanya. Kaya ayaw niyang pumunta. Though the book of Jonah is only four chapters long, it has much to teach about the character of God and the, uh, Jonah's character. Yeah, nakikita natin dito sa istorya ni, ni Jonah, sino ba talaga ang Diyos? Sino ba talaga ang Diyos? Makikita natin. Ano yung karakter ng Diyos? That God is just. Just, parurusahan niya. But also, God is merciful. Siya ay magpapatawad. Yun ang Diyos. Yun ang karakter ng Diyos. Makikita natin dito. Ito naman si Jonas, Jonas character. Proud person. Siya ay Jew. Just imagine, to be chosen by God as His people, very proud. Ang mga Jews, very proud dyan. And, hindi nalalayo itong si Jonah. Okay. So, lesson context tayo. Ito yung tenure ni Jonah. Jonah, Jonah's tenure as prophet, 780 to 760 BC. Now, in 722, Assyria invaded Northern Kingdom. It was Assyria invaded and they destroyed totally and exiled the Northern tribes. Yan yung 722 B.C. He reacted to his call like no other prophets in the Old Testament. Hindi katulad ng ibang propeta yung reaction ni Jonah. Jonah does not only choose not to keep his mouth closed but also to run away. Yan yung ginawa ni Jonah. Oh. Ha? Ayaw niyang magsalita. Hindi lang sa ayaw niyang magsalita, sabihin yung minsahe ng Diyos. O tumakbo pa siya. Tumakbo pa siya. Hindi katulad ng mga ibang propeta. Sumunod sila sa Diyos. Jonah appeared to have been willing to live in self-imposed exile rather than deliver a message of repentance. Okay na. Ma-excel na siya. Wala siya sa mundo. Okay lang sa kanya. Kesa naman, ha, sundin niya yung trabaho na binibigay sa kanya. What is the work given to him? What was his mission? to deliver a message of repentance to Nineveh. 
Ang pangalan pa nga, to the wicked Nineveh. Hmm. An important city of the aggressive Assyrian Empire. Ano ba itong Nineveh? Tignan lang natin itong the city of Nineveh. The city of Nineveh, a royal, dyan nakatira yung hari. Yan yung nakatira yung hari ng Assyria. Nineveh is a city of Assyria. The city was massive, malakas, marangya, very prosperous. Pero it had a reputation of violence and cruelty. Yung panahon na ito, dito sa panahon na ito, Assyria ang siga. Assyria ang siga. At kilala sila bilang mga violenting tao, mga cruel. In fact, the whole world, hindi lang si Jonah, the whole world at that time, sabi nga, would be a separate if the barbarous Assyrians were destroyed. Mabuti pa na masira ito. Yan ang kagustuhan ng lahat ng mga nation noong panahon ni Jonah. Kirain ng Diyos ang Assyria. Okay, so, in addition to his escape attempt, That is in chapter 1, Jonah later revealed this deep disappointment. Ano kaya yung disappointment doon sa chapter 4? Pass forward tayo. Nasa chapter 3 tayo eh. And lesson natin, chapter 3. Yung chapter 4, basahin lang natin nga yung portion na yan. But Jonah was greatly displeased, dis- displeased and become angry. Ano nangyari? Bakit galit na galit si Jonah? He prayed, I knew that you are gracious and compassionate God. Maawain ang Diyos. God is slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. Nagbabago ang Diyos. Ito yung ano ba nangyari? Nagbago nga ang Diyos. Hindi niya itinuloy na parusahan ang ninibe. At ano ang pakiramdam ni Jonah? Malungkot na malungkot siya. Galit na galit siya sa Diyos. Bakit? Bakit ka nagkaroon ng awa dyan sa mga tao niyan? Yan ang kinagagalit ni Jonah. Okay? So, that is the setting. Now, take note. Chapter 3. Tatapos na ito. Yung setting na ngayon ay second time that the word that the Lord came to Jonah. It was the second time. Yung first time, yun yung tumakas siya. Ah, kinain siya ng uh, isda, etc. Ito na yung second time. Second time. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Yan yung, uh, yung term. Then the word of the Lord, yan yung kadalasan na uh, sentence kapag ini-introduce ang isang propeta. Tinawag ng Diyos. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Parang katulad dyan ng mga ibang propeta. Ha? Yun din yung formula. Ha? He was chosen messenger for, oh, for and by the Lord. Jonah is designated as prophet. So pareho yan. Pareho yan sa pagtawag kay Jeremiah, kay Hosea, at sa mga ibang propeta. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I give you. Punta ka ron. Sabihin mo sa kanila yung mga, mga pinag-uutos ka sa'yo. Then we wonder, why would God send an Israelite prophet to a nation that threatened His chosen people? Yan ngayon na nakapagtataka. Gagamitin ng Diyos ang isang Israelita para ibigay ang minsay doon sa mga taong kaaway ng kanyang chosen people nakapagtataka pero may answer let us see the answer Jonah 4.11 should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot, who cannot tell their right hand from their left sabi ng Diyos, ano magagawa ko? Mga creation ko rin yung mga yan. Hindi nila alam ang kanilang ginagawa. I have to send somebody to warn them. Yan ang sabi rito. In other words, God's love is not determined or constrained by national boundaries. 
et cetera. The ancient Israel had nationalistic and exceptionalistic pride due to the fact that they were chosen. Mga proud people, yung mga biruin mo nga naman. Ha? Chosen people. Kaya proud sila. At hindi naiiba si Jonah. Hindi siya naiiba sa pag-iisip. Hindi siya naiiba. Tao mo kami. Tapos dadalhin mo ako doon. Archaeology has determined the size of Nineveh to have encompassed some 1,730 acres. Yan eh, archaeology ito. Uh, totoo ito. Alam nyo, minsan may mga nagsasabi na parable lang ito itong, itong uh, Jonah eh. Story ni Jonah. No, it is true. Uh, modern time. And it was 1,730 acres. Ang population, 120,000. No, uh, Jesus mentioned Jonah in uh, some time. Sabi ni Jesus, when they were asking for sign, there will be no sign except the sign of Jonah. So, sinasabi ni Jesus, hindi parable yan, hindi kwento-kwento lang yan, totoo yan. Chapter 4, Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Yun ang sinasabi niya. Oh, 40 dias na lang kayo, todas na kayo. Yun ang sinasabi niya. Take note. Hindi niya dinadagdag yung continuation. The prophets, when the prophets give the warning, they have a continuation for this. Ano yung continuation? Repent. Turn away from your wickedness and live. Hindi sinasabi ni Jonah yun. Sinasabi lang, winawarningan lang niya. Ganun lang siya. Winawarningan lang niya. Di ba, bakit? Eh, gusto niya ito. Huwag magbago yung mga tao eh. Yan. It seems na he did not have to mention the possibility that God would forgive. After all, the Ninevites were an evil people who deserved judgment. Walang duda. Walang duda yan. The Ninevites deserve to die. And they were very, very cruel. Now, balikan lang natin yung 40. 40. The number 40. Sabi dyan, the number 40 has symbolic meaning. Tulad ng the flood in Noah's time. Diba? 40 days and 40 nights. Continuous raining. Diba? Ito naman yung isa. Years of Israel wandered in the desert. Diba? Yung, uh, yung kwento. They were about to enter the Canaanite. Sabi ni Moses, magpadala tayo ng ispia, labing dalawang ispia, one for his tribe. Pagbalik nila, sabi ng sampung uh, ispia, nakaw, todas tayo, lalaki nito mga Canaanites, patay tayo rito. Sabi naman ni Caleb at naka Caleb and Joshua, kaya natin yan, kama natin ang Diyos. But, natalo sila ng sampo. God was very angry. Anong ginawa niya? He sent the Israelites back to the desert for 40 years. No, so, 40 years silang paikot-ikot doon. Another symbol of this 40 days, Jesus fasted before facing the, temp- the tempter. Bago, bago hinarap ni Jesus yung, yung temptation, yung tempter, nag-fast siya 40 days in 40. So, yan yung symbolic uh, meaning ng 40. Bakit kaya? Ano yung ibig sabihin ito? In each case, God considered the completion of this number of days to be sufficient to excise evil or prove its absence. Ang sinasabi dyan, okay na yung 40 para malaman, malaman kung magbabago o hindi. Nineveh is having that amount of time before being overthrown. It is more than enough by God's reckoning yung 40, uh, 40 days. Now, Roman numeral number 2, the people of Nineveh. Pag-usapan naman natin ngayon itong Nineveh. Verse 5, the Ninevites believe God. Oh, huh, milagro. Sino ba itong mga Ninevites? The Ninevites, of course, had their own gods. Nineveh was home to the temple of Ishtar. Yun yung isang, uh, isang gods, deity, the goddess of love and war. Ashur, from which Assyria got its name was both a city and a god. Yung pala, yung pandong pala kinuha yung pangalan ng Assyria. 
Ashur. And Ashur is a god. Other gods of Assyrian or Babylonian inventions were also worshipped in Nineveh. So, maraming mga gods doon. But at this time, they believe in the God. Sino itong God na sinasabi dito? At this point in time, the people believe in God. The underlying Hebrew of that designation being Elohim. Not Yahweh. Ito, yung Hebrew word for God. In our study, binanggit yung dalawa. God is sometimes called Elohim, sometimes called Yahweh, sometimes called Adonai. And the word Elohim is used without the word Yahweh being adjusted implies that He is the creator of the universe. Ayan you know, yung Elohim. When they are referring to God, Hebrew word Elohim, then He is the God who is the God of creation. When the name of God, uh, the Yahweh, they use the word Yahweh, they are referring to the God of Israel, etc., etc. But of course, the Lord is both creator of everything in the earth and ruler over Israel specifically. The Ninevites believe seem to have been tied only to God as he makes himself known through creation. Even, even if you do not know the law, the law of Moses, because they are not Israelites. But the Bible is saying, Everyone knows God because God has written his law in the heart of every man. 5D, a fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. Now, repenting, the main lesson, repenting. Anong ginawa nila? Fasting. So sila ng sakloth. Anong ibig sabihin ng mga ito? Fasting. Walang kakain. Fasting from food or drink. Ah, the practice indicated self-denial, repentance, humility. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng fasting. No? It is an indication of self-denial, repentance, humility. You have more time to talk to God. Fasting. Ano naman yung sakloth? The cloth was a rough material that was generally made from goat hair. Yeah? And compared dun sa cotton na yung sinusuot natin, yung goat hair, makate, sako eh, makate. It could be, it signifies submission or intense distress. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng pagsusuot ng saklo. Submission or intense distress. Yung isa, fasting. Ngayon, so, sasamaan pa ng sak ng, ng pagsusot ng sackcloth. Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay the fasting combined with wearing sackcloth added intensity to the picture. Fasting combined with sackcloth. Huh? Fasting, hindi ka kakain, hindi ka iinom, magsuot ka ng sackcloth. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay pag kinumbine mo, added in sent- intensity to the picture. So, look at here. A spiritual change was happening Throughout that city, from young and old, all throughout the city, 120,000 people na, nagpa-pasting, nagsusot ng, ng sako. Chapter 6, continuation of repenting. When Jonah's warning reached the king, yun, narinig ng hari. He rose from his throne took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Yan ang ginawa ng hari, naninig ng hari. So, bumabasa sa kanyang trono, tinanggal ang kanyang uh, robe, nagsuot siya ng sackcloth, dinagdagan pa ng isa, sat down in the dust. Let us analyze this. Now, unlike Jonah, the king didn't attempt to flee from God. Instead, he humbled himself. Sinuot niya yung magaspang na damit. A penitent kasama ng mga penitent masses, kasama ng mga tao. Pero dinagdag pa yung sitting in the dust. At sabi rito, maaaring ito ay dahil 
tinatanggap niyang responsibilidad sa mga ginawa niyang sa mga city na na-conquer nila. Alam niyo, malupit itong, uh, itong mga Assyria. May na-invento silang parusa. Lahat ng mga lahat ng mga siyudad na sinakop nila, sinusunog. Pero, meron pang isa, yung kahoy, gagawin nilang matulis. Ha? Ganyan. Lalagay doon sa lupa. Babaon sa lupa. At yung tao itutusok doon sa kahoy. Nakaganon yung, yung tao, hindi po hindi hindi sumasayad ang paa doon sa lupa. Mamamatay na siya ron. Nakatusok yung, yung uh, kahoy doon sa pwit niya hanggang siguro sa lalabunan niya. Ganyang kalupit itong Assyria. Here we see a pagan monarch responding to God in a more obedient fashion than God's own prophet. The Assyrians in Nineveh responded in submissive humility. Wow! The Assyrians in Nineveh submitted in submissive humility. Now, take note. Ang lesson natin ay repenting. But, take note, this is just the beginning of the definition of repentance. Righteous reaction from outsiders as the wise women in intent worship as the wise men's intent to worship uh, ito yung ito yung pass forward to sa time ni Jesus there were also outsiders who acted righteous reactions sino to mga to ang tawag natin ay tatlong hari di ba outside Israel ganun din ang kanilang respond in this time This pagan monarch, ang tawag pa nga sa kanya, pagan monarch. Eh. Pagan monarch. Ha? Verse 7-8, this is the proclamation he issued. Ito na yung kautosan, gumawa ng kautosan yung hari. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or, or flocks t- taste anything. Walang kakain. Tao at animal, walang kakain. Ano pa? But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Kasama yung animal. Let everyone call urgently on God. Yun yung proclamation ng hari. Yun yung proclamation ng hari. And the king showed his support by participating. Kasama siya. Kasama siya. To cover the animals in sackcloth was a symbol of the city's repentance. Ito ay lahat. Eh, bro, mo hindi mo pa kakainin yung mga yung mga animals mo. Ayun ang kabuhayan. Ay matutodas na nga kay lahat diyan. For the king to risk the health of the city, he believed that destruction was imminent. If God didn't see genuine repentance, the well-being of the lifestyle doesn't matter anyway. Yan ang sinasabi ng ga nung nung hari eh kung yung Dios hindi niya makikita na totoo, genuine, ang ating repentance, hindi magbabago ang plano ng Diyos. So, kung hindi mabago, di wala rin kwenta niya mga animals, etc. Now, this is the continuation of the repentance. After fasting and wearing sackcloth, sabi ng hari, let them give up their evil ways. Give up their evil ways and their violence. The king seems to have recognized that empty ritual would give no benefit. What is that empty ritual? Fasting, not eating, not drinking, wearing sackcloth. Sabi niya, these are empty ritual, no benefit. Why? There should be a continuation. True repentance begins with the, with the heart, and is verified through righteous behavior. It is verified through righteous behavior. Merong audit trail. May nakikita. Pagkatapos magbago ng puso. Pagkatapos ng fasting, sackcloth. And then, yes, the, the, the heart was changed, but there should be a continuation. What is that? Manifestation of this change in action. Righteous behavior righteous behavior kaya nga sabi ng hari give up the evil ways 
give up the violence. That is the continuation of the fasting and wearing of sackcloth. That is repentance. That is repentance. Let us just see. Isaiah 58, 3-7, just a portion. Yet on the day of your fasting, nagpa-fasting nga kayo, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Nagpa-fasting nga, hindi naman binabayaran ng overtime. Nagpa-fasting nga, wala namang awa. Hindi binibigay ang lahat ng mga benefits. Ano ang silbi? Di ba? Ano ang silbi ng fasting? The violence of Assyrian is seen in archaeological discoveries. Again, in the modern time, ito yung lumabas na research nila, na discovery nila, na hukay nila. Ito yung mga nahukay. Modern times to. Atrocities committed against prisoners of war, gruesome torture, those not tortured death to death were deported and they work as slaves. Ayan yung mga napatunayan ng archaeology. Verse 9, Who knows? The king is still talking. God may yet, may yet relent. <laughs> si baka sakaling magbago ang isip ng Diyos. And he will be compassion, turn from his fears and anger and so that we will not perish. Magbago siya. Yung kanyang galit, mapalitan ng pagmamahal. Yun yung sinasabi ng hari. Baka sakali. The king's hope in this regard was not unfounded, but it was also wasn't assured. The people had been told they would perish. For God to follow through in his word to them would be just. <laughs> Sinasabi dito, tama lang. Why? That is the character of God. What is the character of God being described here? That God is just. What is the meaning of God is just? He will punish the sin. My punishment, my ginawa ka, justice calls us, there should be punishment. It would be just. Okay lang. Walang diferensya. Verse 10. When God, the people of Nineveh, is spared. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, He relented. He relented. And did not bring on them the destruction He had threatened. Wow! God saw their repentance as demonstrated by what they did. This verse is one of the key passages in Jonah. It captures God forgiving nature. God is just a character of God. But God is also merciful, a character of God. This is the picture in the case of Jonah. The compassionate God who is slow in anger and he had mercy on Nineveh. Salvation is offered to all peoples regardless of nation, language, or culture. The apostle Peter wrote that God was not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. For God has always so loved the world. John 3.16 The historical record tells us, however, that Nineveh's repentance didn't last. <laughs> It did not last. They did not continue. But sandalian lang. Somewhere in Nahum, another minor prophet, 150 years later, pinarosahan din sila. Nineveh suffered destruction in 612 B.C. But before this, Somewhere in 700 B.C., a Syrian empire was used by God to punish the northern tribe. Nasa 700 B.C. and 722. Conclusion. Throughout the scripture, we witness time and time again that God loves mercy. 
The story of Nineveh illustrates that this is extreme fashion. The enemies of God's own people were spared. The enemies of God's own people were spared when they turned their hearts toward him. God's intention for all humanity is to encounter his love and remain in it. The Apostle Paul cataloged all of the forces incapable of separating God's people from God's love. The forces incapable of separating God's love. Let's read Romans 3. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No outside force can cause the separation. No outside force. But we can voluntarily cause it ourselves. It will be from inside. We can reject his will as we become as the Ninevites had been. When we do so, repentance is the cure, as the Ninevites discovered. Think about it. If God was concerned for a petulant prophet, <laughs> it's a rebuilding prophet, and a morally bankrupt city, then his loving commitment to us will remain unshaken. Kayang gawin, kahit ano ng Diyos, dun sa rebuilding prophet, dun sa morally bankrupt city, then he can do it also to us. We can celebrate that God is a gracious and compassionate God, is slow to anger and abounding in love. And in the face of divine kindness, we, like the citizens and rulers of ancient Nineveh, can repent. No human boundaries limit God's grace. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for our lesson. Thank you for teaching us the true meaning of repentance. Help us to have a new heart, but also help us so that true repentance will be shown in our action, in our words, in our dealings with our fellow men. Help us to be like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last slide. So, we are through with the, the third quarter. We are through with the prophets. Now we start with the book of Matthew. We will have a new quarter. Freed from worry, background scripture, Matthew chapter 6. Magandang obaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos.